says Hamas is saying they will not partake in these hostage negotiations, this ceasefire deal negotiations, as tensions remain high in the Middle East, it surpassed the 10-month mark. You can see the Hamas-affiliated social media posted by Fox's Evan Brown saying the Hamas movement will not allow any negotiations uh, as the lives of the Israeli prisoners depend on the hands of the terrorist Netanyahu and his pigs and their families enjoying themselves on the beaches of Miami. So some of the comments there from social media about this is yesterday's also, Israeli airstrike on a school turned shelter in Gaza killed at least 80 people. Now, Axios reporting that Hamas is refusing to participate in the hostage deal ceasefire negotiations that were slated for this week on Thursday. All right, for more on this, let's bring into the conversation right now friend of the program, FDD research manager, manager and wherefore analyst. Thank you so much for joining us here on Live Now from Fox. David May, I appreciate your time. And we hear some of these negotiations as Hamas says they will not participate. How big of a development is this in terms of what's going on in the Middle East? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, I mean, it makes sense that Hamas would not want to participate at this moment. Right now, everyone's waiting for the eventual Iranian attack on Israel as a reprisal for uh, Israel's strike on Hania in Tehran. So uh, Hamas, uh, right now, it's arguing it's negotiating from a position of weakness. They have suffered many serious blows in the past weeks. They lost their political leader. They lost a pretty serious commander. Uh, they lost the, the head of their military wing. So right now they're in pretty weakened state and just in terms of the, the war actually on the ground in Gaza, they're losing and losing badly. Uh, but right now we're waiting, uh, maybe the attack will be Monday night, uh, Tuesday, maybe it'll be sometime this week. Right now the tension and the buildup has been successful from Iran's part in terms of shutting down uh, airlines and a lot of Israel's economy and just the tension of, of waiting for it. Um, and so that's one, one of the reasons maybe why they haven't uh, attacked Israel yet. Uh, but because Hamas is in such a weak position right now, they're hoping that maybe an Iranian attack will help uh, change the playing field in terms of the negotiations. Yeah, and we'll get into that potential retaliation in just a little bit, but I want to talk about this negotiation a little bit and further. And without Hamas's participation with the U.S., with Qatar, with Egypt, all at the table, is there anything that could come from this or will those be scrapped in its entirety? I mean, any, any negotiation that doesn't include one of the warring factions is, is not really worth anything. And actually, one of the things that we saw in the past was the division within Hamas in terms of its political leadership outside of Gaza and its military leadership inside. Now they've seemed to have consolidated that. So at the very least, they won't have, be having that uh, kind of discrepancy within the uh, Hamas uh, movement themselves. Uh, so now at least they'll be they'll have a united front in terms of uh, negotiations, which actually might be a, a positive development. Uh, but uh, anything that doesn't include Hamas itself, no negotiating uh, party has been able to hold uh, Hamas to its word. Not the Egyptians, not the Qataris, not anyone else. So if Hamas isn't there actually uh, negotiating. Anything that is agreed without them is worthless. Yeah, and that's a very good point. And you talked about it, how they'd really no thing for them to, to be at the table for. And let's get into the next point, because they say that because they're expecting retaliation from Iran. And we're hearing reporting also from Axios that the uh, updated assessment is Iran is poised to attack, according to Axios, Israel in the coming days after the assassination of Hamas's political leader. I also want to put up this post from Axios talking about the defense minister. Yoav Gallant spoke on Sunday with the U.S. Secretary of Defense. Lloyd Austin told him the Iranian military preparation suggests Iran is ready for a large scale attack. So uh, that is something that we've been monitoring for the last week or so. What would a large scale attack look like and maybe how prepared is Israel to defend itself? Well, we saw in April uh, an attack that included 300 missiles, rockets, drones, uh, but Israel's success rate in terms of defending itself along with uh, allied support uh, it was about 99 point something percent. Uh, but it's also, it seems that Iran didn't send its best uh, weapons, its best missiles in, in that uh, previous strike. Uh, it may be holding off and maybe prepared to launch more advanced weapons that Israel's uh, missile defense system would have a tougher time dealing with in this one. With the last one, it was pretty well telegraphed, although this one is also, it's been telegraphed uh, for days and weeks 
uh, in, in terms of them saying that they'll strike again. Uh, the April strike, the April Iranian strike was a pretty big embarrassment for the Islamic Republic. Israel's success and also one thing that it did, it pushed uh, Jordan, uh, the United States, France, UK, uh, maybe even Saudi Arabia uh, into a position where they were actually helping to defend Israel. And so one of Iran's goals is to isolate Israel, it did anything but. Uh, but uh, that was a very successful defense by Israel. Um, and, and I guess I, I would hope that it would be the same in this situation, but Iran has much more lethal weapons uh, at its disposal, but the ones that it did send in April were very lethal themselves. So, uh, you know, if, if Israel was successful in that attempt, hopefully it will be successful in this one as well. Yeah, that is a good point. And you date back to one of those 300 rockets, uh, 99 point something percent taken care of as well. Maybe can you just put some context if people forgot about that moment? How different is the conflict in the Middle East then to where it is now? In, in terms of uh, Israel's successes against Hamas and also against uh, Hezbollah, uh, two of Iran's proxies. So in terms of uh, Hamas, they took out, Israel was able to take out their, their main political leader and also their main military leader in, in that uh, span of time. Uh, Israel was also able to take out Hezbollah's main military leader uh, in Lebanon as well. So in terms of Israel's battlefield successes, it's very different. Um, in, in terms of where Hamas is in Gaza, they're very depleted. Um, and so just in terms of the trajectory of the war, uh, it's very much swung in Israel's favor. And also uh, in terms of Israel being able to respond precisely with precise information against uh, targets within, Iranian, within Iran's uh, circle of fire uh, that it maintains around Israel, Israel has uh, definitely uh, surpassed or it's, it's advanced in terms of, uh, in terms of Iran. Uh, and so Iran really is in a position where it needs to fight and claw something back because it helped launch this war on October 7th and, uh, it, and it's not met with uh, much success at all. It's been able to threaten Israel, but uh, the way that it's conducted this in terms of a not, not a full scale war against Israel, it has actually led to Israel's advantage because Israel has much more precision capabilities, much better intelligence. Uh, something that it may not be able to utilize if it's a full-scale war where Iran can use uh, its massive numbers of weapons against Israel. Yeah, that is a very good point as well. And you mentioned just the context in which the assassinations happen, and that's why the uh, retaliation may be coming. Of course, another tweet that says the updated assessment from Israel, Israeli intelligence is that Iran has decided the attack of Israel directly in retaliation for the assassination of the Hamas politi political leader, maybe within days. And I do want to ask you uh, about this, about what's to come, about the U.S.'s involvement. How does a attack from Iran change things? How does it complicate things in the region? And how are they involved? How is the United States involved, if at all? I guess it depends on where the attack comes from and where they are attacking. Uh, in the past, they've attacked US forces in Iraq and Syria. Um, and so that's actually been direct attacks on uh, US troops. And that's very problematic. Uh, in terms of regional stability uh, with uh, the Iranian proxy in Yemen, the Houthis, they've been able to shut down a pretty big uh, chunk of international trade, uh, maritime trade. Uh, and so it's in the U.S.'s interest to have uh, international order, peace, stability, uh, and trade throughout the region. And it's in Iran's uh, best interest to shut that down to show that it can harm the U.S. Uh, rule of law, rule of order uh, in the region. All right, my last question before I let you go, because we've talked about this potentially uh, retaliation being imminent for the better part of a week. Now again, reporting that it could be coming in the next few days. If we're at the same point exactly a week from now, are you more concerned? Are you less concerned? How do you feel about that? Well, I, th I think the mood among Israelis is a, a sense that they've been on the precipice for days, weeks, months, years. And so this is just another situation, just another threat of their annihilation. This is nothing new. Uh, it's in Iran's interest to have them have Israel on edge to because the biggest threat that they have is the threat of the violence. But when it's actually come, it has not been successful. So the their biggest advantage that they have is to stoke fear in Israel 
to harm Israel's economy, to isolate Israel and make others not want to get involved in the potential damage and, and fire that will come. Uh, but once it does come, uh, I suspect it won't be what Iran hopes it will be. All right, on the brink of a larger conflict there in the Middle East. David May, thank you again. I appreciate your insight here on Live Now from Fox.